So last month it was chunks of Europe, uh, particularly Germany and uh, Austria, as I recall, uh, that were just being wiped out by f massive flooding, just, just shocking, um, historic flooding. Uh, today it is New York and New Jersey and the, and the Northeast. Um, uh, you know, you, you, down in Louisiana, you sort of expect hurricanes from time to time, but uh, uh, what is happening in, 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 the, in, the, in the Northeast is, is uh, close to unprecedented. Extreme weather is very much on the rise. I wanted to check in with uh, Dr. Ben Strauss. He is the CEO and chief scientist at Climate Central, climatecentral.org. Uh, his Twitter handle is uh, either at Climate Central or at Ben underscore Strauss, S-T-R-A-U-S-S. Um, Dr. Strauss, welcome back to the program. Tell, tell me about the, this, you know, what, how, how rapidly is this happening? How, how, what can we expect to be happening over the next five or 10 or 15 years as a consequence of what we're seeing right now? Yeah, well, first of all, Tom, thanks so much for having me back. Um, sure. Pleasure to be here. And yeah, this was one hell of a summer. Um, and I have to say, uh, last summer was too. It's hard to remember. We had a pandemic going on. We still do. It was, but but last summer was a terrible climate summer too. So, you know, we're we're just we're just a, a little bit more than one degree Celsius into our warming. We had um, the IPCC, this international group of scientists, uh, advising that one and a half degrees Celsius is maybe the the safer limit we could aim for, and it's already almost out of reach in terms of where we're gonna get. But, you know, look at the world that we have here at one degree Celsius. Uh, it's, it's really quite something. And one of the themes that comes up in a lot of climate research, um, some of my own, uh, some of the work we do at Climate Central, but really broadly in the science community, is that changes that sound really small on average, like one degree, can translate into a totally different world in terms of the extremes. And it's the extremes like the flooding from Ida, and frankly, the flooding was at last week in Tennessee, mm -hmm. and there was flooding in China, and the fires in California. All of these extremes, right, small change in the average can lead to a really big increase in your risk of the extremes. So we are in a new world. We're seeing massive wildfires in California. Uh, the the uh, giant one in Oregon is just now uh, basically under control. Um, we are at least, I believe, five years into a drought here. I, I'm, I'm based in Portland, Oregon. Um, last year for a couple of weeks, we couldn't breathe because of the, because of the smoke. Um, uh, I'm noticing we had 116 degrees for three days here uh, a month and a half ago, yes, and, that, and I've got that, trees. That, that was one degree. Go ahead. That was one degree less than the all-time record in Las Vegas. Right, and I mean that, and, that just that just doesn't belong in Portland. That's right, and we've got trees uh, in our neighborhood that are clearly in shock. I mean, they're they're, they're, they're starting the week after that happened, which was back in June. Uh, their leaves are curling up, and they're they're dying. These trees are dying, and we've got you know, yeah. and and. and I'm wondering how long is it going to be before our foliage, before our plant base here in the Pacific Northwest begins to resemble that of South and Central California, uh, or even you know the high desert of, of Nevada? How long is it going to be before the East Coast is so regularly and efficiently inundated with floods that large parts become an uninhabitable? Um, you know, how, it seems to me like, you know, I, I've been on this planet 70 years. So, you know, it's a, I don't remember any of this happening yeah. the first 40 or 45, no. 50 years of my life. The last 20 years, no. it's been a, like a freight train. And I'm just wondering what the best science is suggesting this world is gonna look like in 10 or, in 10 or 15 or 20 years. What are you seeing? What are the studies yeah. showing? Well, you know, it, it's not it's not pretty and you know I, i'll tell you that getting getting the timing down to a five-year a 10-year increment that's pretty tough it's easier to kind of say what the destination is mm -hmm. like let me give you a, a metaphor um or an analogy like if i dumped a 
truck size block of ice, you know, outside on the street right now, I'm, I'm in New Jersey and it's July, you, you don't need a degree to say that it's going to melt, right. right? It's all going to melt. Much harder to say, you know, exactly how many when. Yeah. ounces mount, melt per minute and exactly when does it finish. But, right. you know, your question about the trees, for instance, in the Pacific Northwest is a really important one because, um, I mean, I, I, I've talked to um, some leading forest scientists who think that California, its equilibrium state, there aren't going to be trees. It's going to be a grassland and a shrubland, right, for the right. most part. And I used to think of the Pacific Northwest, west of the Cascades, as being a, one of the better refuges from climate change. Obviously, it's not. Well, we used and to think that think we were of, a, temperate, a temperate rainforest. Yeah, well, exactly. But think of how much fuel there is west of the Cascades where it's wetter. Oh, and yeah. if you if you get really dry, I don't even want to begin to think of the fires that could happen. Oh, yeah, yeah so, and, they, and they are happening. So a uh, bottom line the, here, the, we the just past, need... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, the, pa the past is not a guide to the future. The, the good news is that this is, you know, <laughs> it's the most solvable hard problem that we have. We just have to do it. Right. There's this nuclear reactor 93 million miles away from us, a fusion reactor that is blowing way more energy at us than you know, on our best days the entire planet uses from fossil fuels. And if we simply harvested that energy, we could meet all our energy needs. We could stop burning fossil fuels, maybe use a little bit of it to make medication or something. But that, you know, I mean, the, this is not a, an impractical vision of a new world, is it? No, it is not. Um, and, and really serious, highly detailed research has come out about it that we can do this, right? It, it's not just a theory. There's a roadmap decade by decade. And not only does it mean um, really, you know, shutting down, bending the curve on, on global warming, but it also means cleaner air, less pollution, um, quieter streets as you have electric vehicles, you know, no soot coming out of tailpipes or smokestacks that, uh, frankly, if, you know. Which is causing thousands house, of cancers looks, and millions of asthmas every year. It, it, it's cancer and asthma. It's also just mundane things like the snow turning gray after it snows yeah. uh, or, or cities getting grimy and gritty. There, I think someone from the future, when we're all solar and wind, coming back to visit us today would be disgusted yeah. by... Uh, combustion engines, just like we would hate the stink of horse manure in city streets 150 years ago. Yeah, or walk so, into a saloon where know. there's spittoons. <laughs> I get it. Exactly. Dr. Ben Strauss, exactly. climatecentral.org. Thank you, Dr. Strauss.